Black Widow, falling in love can be hard, but it can also be incredible. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times SNL made fun of rom-coms. 200 bucks. Name anyone in the school. Anybody. Anyone. Um... Um... I'm going to ask you to go back to what, Mr. Osterberg? For this list, we're looking at times this late-night TV sketch show put their own spin on romantic comedy tropes. Which SNL rom-com spoof makes your heart flutter? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Rom-com trailer. In a rom-com for the pandemic era, Nick, played by Alex Moffat, finally finds love as the world comes to a standstill. Ooh, damn it! Just when you think you'll never find love... Love finds you. Oh, hello, I'm Nick. Quarantining when you're single and living alone isn't easy. So Nick uses the time to become an expert in self-love, if you catch our drift. Sometimes all it takes is a global pandemic for a guy to finally fall in love. Round two? We still get all the highs and lows of a romantic comedy relationship, but we also seem to be watching a lonely man's descent into madness. Critics are calling it the best coronavirus rom-com of all time. The world's first rom-cove. So relatable, it's depressing. Hilarious sketches like this prove why Alex Moffat is an underrated SNL gem. And unlike more traditional rom-coms, this one was probably more relatable than many of us would care to admit. Number 9. Ryan Gosling Jazz Monologue I haven't felt this excited since I saved jazz. <laughs> you guys know I saved jazz, right? A Ryan Gosling saved jazz meme emerged amid criticism that La La Land had whitewashed the musical genre. And it's dying. It's dying, man. It's dying on the fine. And the world says, let it die. It had its time. Well, not on my watch. So, while hosting the season 43 premiere, Gosling decided to humor the meme and explain that he did, in fact, save jazz. Although he's actually there to promote a different movie, he's quite delusionally still riding high on the success of the 2016 film. The first day of shooting on Blade Runner, I met Harrison Ford. I know. And he walks right up to me, and he looks me right in the eye, and he says, Ryan, what the heck is jazz? <laughs> And of course, the fact that he saved Jazz. Even Gosling can't keep a straight face as he piles on the self-praise. Jazz was born in New Orleans. <laughs> or as it's correctly pronounced, Nerlands. While Keenan unsuccessfully tries to give him a reality check, it seems like his co-star Emma Stone might fare better. Or so we thought. Brian, you didn't save Jazz. How many times have we talked about this? <laughs> a lot. Yeah, a lot. Because you didn't save jazz. We saved jazz. <laughs> Number 8. Weekend Update – One Dimensional Female After a study highlighted the underrepresentation of women in movies, we were introduced to the one-dimensional Heather. I'm Heather, from work. You probably haven't noticed me because I wear glasses. But later, I might take them off, and you might notice me. In a monotonous voice, she speaks in a string of cringy rom-com cliches to remind us that she comes from a male-driven comedy. I'm a girl, but I'm also hot, but I also like sports. The very talented Cecily Strong knows just how to make us laugh, while still making extremely valid points about the double standards of the movie industry. I'm not one of those girls who just eats salads. I like burgers and wings and beer. I just have the body of a salad girl. <laughs> Confusing, right? Her back and forth with a usually confused Colin Jost also provides an excellent send-up of the genre. Oh. Uh, hello. <laughs> I didn't notice you there. Yeah. It's me, Heather from work. Confusing, right? Extremely. It's been a while since Heather stopped by the update desk, but we doubt we've seen the last of her either. Wow. <laughs> you really have changed. You've grown up a lot. When? Number 7. Awkward Flirts Across the Hall neighbors Sarah and Evan, played by Vanessa Bayer and Kyle Mooney, are clearly into each other. But flirting doesn't come naturally to either of them. This might sound weird. Uh, would you ever want to maybe, like, I don't know, get, you know, more groceries? 
if for oh, you because you yeah, should go um, maybe get some more oh, if, in case you run out. Yeah. Instead, they awkwardly dance around the situation and avoid making any direct advances. For instance, if you're trying to flirt, we'd recommend staying away from bodily functions. Although it seems to work for them, so who are we to judge? I just want you to know that I really, really, really like you. Soccer? Bayer and Mooney effortlessly make these characters so endearing and somewhat relatable. Eventually, Evan musters the courage to ask Sarah out. Hey, I just gotta say this. Do you wanna go Hey, on? Sarah, do you wanna have sex with me right now? Sure. Awesome. Um, I guess I'll just go get set up. While she gladly accepts, there's just someone, I mean, something she's gotta do first. Okay, well, um, I'm just gonna go this guy, and then we'll go on our date. Our date. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. See you. Very soon. <laughs> Number six, New Year's Eve sequel, The Apocalypse. Following in the path of Valentine's Day and New Year's Eve, SNL offered another holiday rom-com that nobody asked for. Comes the story of the whole world coming together on one night to celebrate the apocalypse. This time it centers around the most life-altering or ending occasion of them all, the apocalypse. And if you thought those first movies were star-studded, they don't hold a candle to this New Year's Eve sequel extravaganza. Starring literally thousands of your favorite celebrities, like Al Roker and Christina Aguilera. It was essentially an opportunity for everyone, including host Katy Perry, to showcase their arsenal of impressions, from Bill Hader's Alan Alda to Kristen Wiig as Drew Barrymore and Kim Cattrall. And don't miss an unscripted Kim Cattrall. The four horsemen of the apocalypse. I just hope they have four huge horse SNL is renowned for its brilliant spoof trailers, and this one had us exploding with laughter. Number five, Meet Cute. Oops, sorry. Oh, that's okay. Oh, that's crazy. Nobody ever gets my order. You know how in movies the characters will be like, it's a date, without actually exchanging any details? Well, this sketch gives a more realistic approach as to what happens next. Oh, but wait! Where are we going? And what time? And what's your last name? And what's your phone number? What's everything? Claire! Claire, played by Kristen Stewart, blissfully prepares for the date. Meanwhile, Steve, played by Pete Davidson, frantically tries to locate her with nothing but her first name to go on. Have you seen somebody named Claire? Hi, is this Claire? There's like a sunshine in her eyes. By the magic of romantic comedies, though, they find each other. But they have clearly not learned from their mistakes. Claire, I don't know what apartment you're in! <laughs> Funnily enough, Davidson is set to star in an actual rom-com called Meet Cute with Kaylee Cuoco. Let's hope that their communication is a little better. Number four, Weekend Update, Romantic Comedy Expert. Is it really a meet cute if only one of you knows what's going on? Well, if you ask romantic comedy expert Daisy Rose, the answer is yes. I'm Michael Che, and it's nice to meet you. Oh. <laughs> um, well, I'd better um, get into my talk. Played by Vanessa Bayer, Daisy is meant to be on the show to discuss some recent TV rom-coms. But instead, she tries to bring some rom to this com with almost every trope under the sun. She even nails a plethora of sweeping declarations, like the ones fans of the genre only know too well. Anyway, getting back to romantic comedies, we're, <laughs> we're finishing each other's sentences. <laughs> Michael Che is having none of it, and his stony responses only make it even funnier. She did not have him at hello. I think that, um, that maybe I was meant to be here tonight because I was meant to meet you. That is not actually why we brought you here. <laughs> Number three, prom queen. So you think you could take anyone to prom and they'll be queen just because they went with you? Basically. Riffing off of the plot of so many teen rom-coms, Michael Keaton plays a teacher who becomes the subject of a She's All That Style bet. What do you say, Zach? A bet? Huh. Unless, of course, you're too heartbroken. Just name the terms. It's a boy meets teacher story, 
making fun of overused plot devices from removing glasses to see the beauty underneath to making extravagant declarations of love in the pouring rain. There was a bet, okay? It was a stupid, stupid bet. And I don't even care about the money or any of that because I accidentally, I accidentally fell in love. Only in this version, Andy learns that glasses aren't all that appearance altering. Of course, no teen movie is complete without some drama. And Mr. Osterberg learns of the bet in the teacher's lounge. Eddie Gallivan is taking a loser to prom and he bet $200 that he could make them prom queen. <laughs> Eddie's gonna turn some loser into prom queen? <laughs> He's gonna try. <laughs> Luckily, everything is neatly and swiftly resolved, and he takes home the crown. Number two, Black Widow trailer. When it came to life in the big city, Black Widow had it all figured out. Might be to call whoever invented heels and leave them a nasty message. Black Widow finally got her own movie in 2021, but Marvel did keep her waiting for quite a while. Led by host Scarlett Johansson, this sketch from season 40 theorizes as to why that might be. In Black Widow, Age of Me, Natasha Romanoff is just another busy woman in a big city who doesn't go looking for love, but love finds her anyway. The only thing missing in Black Widow's life Such a klutz. <laughs> was love. Hey, I'm Ultron. She's joined by her cheeky best friend Thor, played by Taron Killam, and sweet Captain America, played by Beck Bennett. Even though we would totally watch this, Marvel decided to take their movie in a different direction. I should have come back for you. You don't have to say that. It's okay. It was real to me, too. Let's just hope that SNL's version has a happier ending for this Avenger. Black Widow, Age of Me. Marvel, we know girls. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Hillary Actually. The former presidential hopeful has a lot she needs to say. <laughs> 50s romance. Something tells us that this summer lovin' won't last long. No, I'm just saying I want any puppies. Then I could see him sneaking a peek down my blouse. He started crying, saying, where are all the puppies? My friends told me there would be puppies in here. So he thought your sweater had real puppies inside. He did. Hallmark Channel Christmas promo. It may have been cut for time, but this promo still shows why it's not Christmas without a Hallmark rom-com. Jessica Normal and Canadian handsome Chris Bearstick star in Yes, Santa. It's quantity over quality, people, and we are just blasting your ass with these. Eternal spark of love, office romance. This could be the start of a very crowded relationship. So you're really into puppets? Yeah, they're my life. Oh, here, one of them came to work with me today. Came with you? You mean you, you, mean you brought them? Right? <laughs> I want you to meet Socrates. All right. <laughs> Socrates loves to sing. I'm a big boy now, a big boy now, a big boy now and a big boy. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Christmas Romance featuring Amy Adams. What are you doing here? My husband's right inside. Who is it? Um, it's Carol Singers. As time has passed, this memorable scene from Love Actually has not aged particularly well. Yet SNL managed to bring it back from just plain creepy and actually turned it into a great piece of comedy. Though the skit was unfortunately cut for time, it's too funny not to make this list. In it, Pete Davidson turns up at Amy Adams' home with a boombox and a lot to get off his chest. The premise is perfect for Pete's wacky sense of humor, and you can see that both actors struggle to keep from laughing throughout. <laughs> Admittedly, it's a pretty long gag, which is perhaps why it didn't make it to air. But if you ask us, it is worth sticking with until the very end. Look, you're sweet, 
But I'm married, and also you're not that sweet, so... Oh, uh, sure, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Peace! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.